listeners, I'm back with another very interesting episode of Melting Pot, a series of conversations with incredibly talented and passionate people who are also truly inspirational and a lot of them are change makers as well. Today I'm in conversation with someone who really needs no introduction, but I'm going to try and introduce her anyways. My guest today is Charu Shankar. Charu is an actor par excellence. She's been seen in films like A Reluctant Fundamentalist, Darjeeling Limited, and she's also been seen on a number of popular popular series, just to name a couple, Made in Heaven and A Suitable Boy. So Charu, um, I think I can go on with this introduction. (laughs) Please don't. Please stop. (laughs) No, 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 I can't. (laughs) Charu is also a theater and dance director and a fitness enthusiast. Okay, I'm going to stop now. So thank you so much. Uh, Charu for finding the time to talk to me today and no thank you Payal for having me thank you so much (laughs) and lovely audiences who are listening to this right now (laughs) yeah absolutely and you know I'm really looking forward to it so where do we start from maybe a little bit about your background and you I know that you and you mentioned to me before we started the formal interview or chat that uh, you're from Delhi so yes so so that's your really that's where you grew up that's my city yeah Delhi is my city I, I grew up just loving Delhi Delhi was a great great place to grow up in the 1980s and 90s uh, yeah and I went to college in 2000. So it was just wonderful. Delhi University is just fantastic. And uh, the weather in Delhi, I mean, of course, now, uh, unfortunately, you're mired by all the pollution. But it was a great place to grow up. And my father was in a government job. So he used to be transferred all over the country. And I think my mother is a doctor. And I think that my mother at some point decided to put her foot down and said, look, we can't keep doing this. You know, we can't keep uprooting ourselves every time you get a transfer. So she was the one who decided that she was going to, you know, just grow roots here in this city. And this was the city where her parents were at the time. And so we, so we just, so so she made the decision. And then from then on, you know, we stopped moving around with daddy and we just, uh, we we stay put. We, uh, we, we, my brother and I went to modern school and after modern school, I went to Lady Shiram college and uh, LSR was, of course, modern was the place I think, which really introduced me to the performing arts. Modern school is one of those schools where they are really seriously into co-curricular activities. Like, and, and I think very early on in my life, I was very lucky. I had a lovely teacher called Mrs. Nalini Mishra, ma'am. And I was 10 years old and I had never had any professional training really in dance at that time. And uh, she was holding auditions for this huge play that the school was going to be doing. And uh, so she just told the batch that, you know, anybody who has any dance training, come up and audition for the, 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 the main lead. And she didn't like anyone's auditions. <laughs> so she said, this is all nonsense. And, you know, like, would anybody else like to try? And I don't know what got into me at the time. I still wonder what made me stand up that day. You know, a little 10-year-old girl who didn't really know much about dance. And I, you know, said, I, I'd like to give it a shot. And it's really unlike me, honestly. But I did that. And she said, okay, let's see you do it. And, and I just tried something, some, you know, like some, some whatever came to my head. And she really liked it and she gave me the role. And that, that I think that was the starting point of my career. I played Meera in my school play and it was a huge play. You know, we eventually held it at Kamani Auditorium, which is one of the biggest, best auditoriums in the city. And uh, that really set me down this path. And from there, it was just, there was just no turning back because that's when the dance teachers, you know, they watched it and they said, oh, okay, there's something there. And then the music teacher was like, oh, there's something there. And then I just, I think I was on stage all the time, Bayan, all the time growing up. I was constant. and modern school was that kind of school, you know, they would just, they would celebrate anything. I mean, you take any random festival and modern school is like, let's celebrate it big time. (laughs) So I, as a result, I was constantly, 
be on the stage and they really encouraged it. You know, like the teachers knew that, you know, they could see something that at that time I couldn't see, you know, and it's not that, you know, I wasn't encouraged in studying. I was a science student and very fond, in fact, of physics at the time. And so I continued my studies, but they also like, there was a very beautiful balance actually that was struck in school itself. And so when I went to LSR, which was, I mean, that my college blew my mind, Payal. I had no idea that such a world could exist. In, there were, in what way? In what way? In, you know, in the sense, how do I describe LSR? First of all, it was a girls' college. And, you know, for the first time, I think I was experiencing this kind of sisterhood, which was so intense. Like, it, it, I wouldn't even call it a friendship. I think we, like, like the way you responded to, you know, your theater society was just, it was incredible. You know, the kind of collaborative ideas over there. Everybody in LSR was so incredibly talented and so incredibly smart at the same time that it was just another level of wow. So is, and of course, being sorry. in university, you know, part, uh, LSR was, you know, we were South Campus, but we were still part of the university. And so, you know, in Delhi University, you, you know, you get together, the, col- what, the college gets together and creates a play. And then that play gets performed like millions of times, uh, you know, every, any, any, co- any competition, anywhere, you know, you take that play and there's a cash prize at the end of it. So <laughs> it was amazing. And yeah, I think that's how I realized that, you know, acting can actually pay because like if I just won like best actress in like three competitions in a year, that was a really cool 20,000 bucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> at that time, it was like, hey, this is good, you know? And then if you win best play, then, you know, that was a cash sum and it got distributed amongst all the girls so it was like it was just incredible so I also learned how to drive very early so you know I was very independent, independent I'm gonna stop yeah. talking now no 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 it's it's not about me asking questions it's about <laughs> talking because everyone wants to hear you and not me what I was saying was that is that the time when because you said you were a science student but did that sort of take a back seat and is that when you sort of discovered that okay I want to make this a career I want to move towards acting but it's theater I don't know when cinema came about and of course we will hear that from you so, <laughs> was that sort of a turning point for you so actually I was very confused and anybody who knows me would tell you this about me that I'm the most confused person ever I literally cannot decide on anything. Like I cannot decide on like the color of the upholstery that I want. I cannot decide what I want to eat for dinner if we go out to a restaurant. Like I just leave it up to my husband or my friends or my parents or like just just decide because I can't make up my mind whether I want, you know. I, I depend on my father. Uh, you know for that and I always feel that my father perhaps knows me a little bit more than I know myself and uh, so even though I had the marks to continue to do science after school it was my dad actually who thought it would be really good for me to go to LSR and it was very hard to get into LSR like you know you had to pass entrance exams and blah 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 and somehow I made it to English honors and my dad said he said you should do this because you love reading and I said yeah I love reading and he's like and you know you love being on stage and you love theater and you know what makes a good what makes good theater good scripts that's the written word so you know does you should I think you'll enjoy English so I switched because I I thought that what he said made sense <laughs> okay so yeah and that's how I and I eventually did my master's in English and I loved it I would have gone on to do you know, an MPhil. And I think my ultimate ambition at the time was to come back to LSR as a as a professor. Wow. And uh, <laughs> that, that, history, that never happened. I know. Everything yeah. else happened. <laughs> yeah. Your, but your but they were very was... sweet. They did, they did call me back a couple of times to address the students and stuff. So that was very sweet. But no, I loved, I love my subject. I absolutely love English. And, and I feel that the tools that we were taught by our professors who were mm-hmm. amazing. Like, did I mention that the professors in LSR were incredible? They were rock stars. I mean, they were just fantastic so yeah I still sort of use you know those kind of techniques and you know criticism and stuff like that to just deconstruct the scripts that I get even now because I I like doing that I like to discover more for the character by just 
getting into what the scriptwriter has actually written for you. So that's how I work. Okay. Yeah. So you basically, you still use those tools and you still kind of, it stayed with you for, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for, for the longest. So that must Absolutely. Been, yeah. I mean, to the extent that if I pick up a Shakespearean script, even now I can hear my professor KK speak to me in my head. I mean, I can hear her voice, you know, that's how, that's how influential they were in my life. Wow. All of them. I wow. had amazing, I had an amazing set of professors. They wow. were just incredible. Yeah. So you definitely got lucky there. So then what happened next? How did, so, uh, so was this, I mean, did cinema, because I'm not sure which was the first film that you were a part of. I don't think it was, I think it was, was it Reluctant Fundamentalist or was it? No, it was, it was Darjeeling it, Limited. Limited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it and was how that uh, Wes Anderson's film. Yeah, that was just... <laughs> complete chance. So while I was performing in my college theater plays, you know, college theater would have external judges who were all like working professionals in the field of theater and film come to watch and judge college theater. So Dilip Shankar, who is a casting director and who's also, uh, you know, later on we discovered that we're cousins, long re related. And now we're of course very, very good friends. Uh, so, so Dilip came to watch a play and he really liked it. And he actually judged it best play and he gave me the best actress award in that one. And then he, he was the casting director for all these international projects. And so he said that he called me and, and at first he, he placed me in a play with Royce Nabel, which was just incredible. It was a fantastic play. And I had Adil Hussain who came in, you know, did some of the direction. Roy himself was fantastic. Coco Konkona was in the play. And I mean, it was just a fantastic cast and crew. And I did that play. And then NDTV had just started at the time, around the corner from LSR, actually. So everybody was vying for an internship there. Uh, you know, what to do. You're so broke when you're in college. You know, you just want like, you want a job so badly. And I, I, I was sort of also learning how to dance. So all of those things sort of came together. And NDTV called me for an audition. And they were actually my first job not exactly film but television they hired me to anchor their fitness segment their daily fitness segment it was a my segment was called fata fit <laughs> fata fit fitness okay. and so i learned you know how to how to sort of combine my love for dance and 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 you know exercise which i was just sort of discovering at the time and and then i worked with ndtv on and off for the next 10 years and i traveled all over the world with them because then, you know, from, from NDTV, they became many channels, including NDTV Good Times, you know, and those were good times indeed. So yeah. we, we really, we really traveled all over the world. And it was wonderful. Uh, but coming back to Wes Anderson's film, so, so there was an audition call and, and Wes Anderson is extremely picky, extremely, like he is very, very nitpicky about everything. So my audition went and then, you know, it came back and the lip said, well, can you just not wear this and wear that? And, you know, shoot it again. And I said, all right. And I shot again and I sent. So we, we sort of auditioned for it many times. And then finally he just, you know, he said, all right, let's get her. And I went and it was, it was a very short scene. It's actually the last scene of the film, but also important in the sense that it sort of turns the story, you know, into a, this could happen again kind of thing. He was very clear about who he wanted for that role. And then I, I don't know, tried on so many costumes and it was, it was very elaborate. And then there was many hours spent on the angle of my bindi. I mean, that's how, yeah, that's how nitpicky <laughs> Wes Anderson, with yeah. him. Yeah, he yeah. was in the room saying, no, this and no, no. This. So he's, he's very, very particular. And then, of course, I had to shoot the scene with Owen Wilson. And <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, with the three men. And I was just like, oh my God, I was so starstruck. But yeah, it was great. It was, you know, therefore I was supposed to actually go for just one day, but I ended up staying over for five days and they were having the wrap up party and I was sort of part of the whole thing. So it was, it was lovely. It was amazing. And it's, it's really such a small scene in the film, but the film became a cult classic. So it's just, just I'm, I was very lucky that, you know, I just, yeah, I think yeah. absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a great way to start a career. 
Absolutely. House, yeah. And even though, like, it was. <laughs> that it was a very, it was just one scene, but I think the impact of that scene and the fact that you actually did that scene with, with like, an actor like Owen Wilson, I think it's, it, it just must have set something going for you, right? In terms of, okay. I know I can do this. And so where next? Yeah, I suppose. I think it was very fascinating for me because that was the first time I had really, really been on a film set and was observing everything, you know, as an actor and, and watching how things were done so that whatever I was saying or doing or even looking or, you know, just like glancing Yamaha was being captured. I, I found that really fascinating. But really my love affair with, with film and with was actually when I was shooting uh, for my show Siyasat, which we made for uh, Epic, because that was an incredible show. We shot 45 episodes and, and I got to lead a full life in that show. It was a period drama and it is the story of Mehru Nisa, who goes on to become Noor Jahan. So it's a story of like, it's the before story, right? So we all know Noor Jahan as the empress, Jahangir's wife, blah, blah, blah. But who was she before she got married to him? She got married to him at the age of 34. So what was, what was her life like before? So it was, it was that life. And it was amazing because I got to experience everything that you would expect in, in, in like a complete life. Like it was an actor's dream project for, and I, I, I fell in love, you know, got my heart broken, married the wrong guy, so lost okay. children, yeah. had children, was yeah. in a war, murdered somebody. You know, like it was yeah. just, it was everything that you got to play. And that too in a Mughal period drama, like it was wow. just incredible. Wow. So, the, so costumes, awesome. the costumes must have been spectacular. The costumes were, were great, but the language was the language. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, speaking like that. And because I grew up in Delhi and because my grandparents are Purana Dilliwalas, they spoke in that very, you know, Urduized Hindustani. That was what was the spoken language home. Hmm. You know, Tehzeeb Bali. Jo boli hoti hai. That was our spoken language that I would speak with my grandparents. So it was just such a pleasure to get a chance to actually, you know, really go into that, you know, that, that, that beautiful childhood memory that I associate with that language, which is, you know, speaking to my nana and speaking to his brothers and sisters uh, was just, it was incredible. I, I would just love it. Like every day the scripts would come and I'd be like, wow, it's a beautifully written show. Um, and I just, I just enjoyed it so much. Wow. Yeah. So that must be, yeah, I can, I can understand. I mean, just listen. I think it's very, it's, it's really cute that you would say, oh, the costumes must be great. <laughs> but uh, let me tell you something about costumes. Okay. <laughs> when they are like, <laughs> you know, usually you're wearing those heavy, heavy costumes in Bombay. It is hot and humid. In our case, in Siyasat, we were wearing them in Bika Nail. In oh. June, you're listening to a fusion of stories recounted for the first time ever by some fascinating people from across the globe with me, Pio, on this very unique and special podcast series, Melting Pot. Oh my <laughs> god! Oh, I mean, with and no air like, conditioning, obviously no air conditioning. Not all the time. I mean, yeah. if it's an ex outdoor scene, how there's no air conditioning. So they, you're, it's hot and humid. You're wearing like millions of silk and zari and, you know, everything else that like, you know, can scratch your skin. And then they put jewelry and then you have makeup and then you're sweating, but you can't do <laughs> Basically, you, have a, you actually have a makeup artist on standby before every shot to wipe your sweat it's like <laughs> so and you have to is more not my best memory from <laughs> <Okay. Siyasa. laughs> or or it's, from any other show costume is not really like i'm just okay. not like wow look at me no it's like <laughs> oh my god can i just <laughs> and i think if you ask any actor this they would tell you yeah the truth i guess yeah I, and i can understand i mean you know with those lights on you plus so much makeup and all whatever you need to wear especially in your case when it was a period drama i can completely empathize with you on that but yeah but i couldn't i couldn't resist mentioning the costumes because you somehow have these 
visual and obviously in, in you do get to see a lot of period uh, drama and so i can i can and and visually it's so impactful but of course yeah, but when you when you hear the person who's actually in it uh, see <laughs> how uncomfortable it is it makes complete sense <laughs> so so Though, um, i mean having said that they're very very sweet on a film set you know they really try and make you as comfortable as is possible they really oh, try because they expect i mean obviously because you need to your you need to emote and you need to the take has to be i mean it has to be real right yeah. so yeah so i'm sure they would make you comfortable absolutely mm. because it's it's hard work so what happens after that so after you finished siasa uh, did you so the um, uh, reluctant uh, fundamentalist happened after that or before oh uh, no it it was before oh, okay it was okay. before yeah and, well yeah, that was lovely I, i met mira for the first time and and for me it was love at first sight to meet mira nair i just absolutely in awe of her i just i love her i want to like be her like i'm i just I, i adore her to bits so i was so happy when she chose me and again it was it was a very small role but it was with rizwan and you know there was such such a fantastic ensemble cast and and i met shivana ji for the first time and om puri ji and of course so it was just great to be a part of that set and again it was a, it was a really small role but i loved it and i loved her and and uh, i think she was the first person who really like made me feel that oh i think i want to do more of this mm-hmm. and uh, actually it was mira who recommended me for siasa because there was a special screening of reluctant fundamentalist in bombay and the head of epic channel at the time had i think he had gone for the screening and after the screening he asked mira that you know i'm looking for somebody to play mehrunissa in my show and you know that that girl's nice who's she and mira is like oh that's charu let me give you a number <laughs> and uh, that's yeah that's how i landed and then they called me and i and i did actually get the role so she was very much i i very much have mira to thank for for a lot wow <laughs> wow and then it was just crazy <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine, and I I think you've also done some amount of modeling, or is it, or uh, oh, done no. ads, or because I think is it Cadbury? Yes, it is Cadbury. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So, I modeling not really. So I was just not in that space, and or in those circles. And fashion is that? Oh wow! If you see me dress, you'd be like, wow, crazy. So no. <laughs> I don't understand anything about fashion. I literally don't. And I was more into the dancing and the theater and everything. So so I did do a, a couple of campaigns, very beautiful sari campaign for La Fair sarees which I had done which did very very well. But yes, I have done some ads. Cadbury of course I think is is one of the more popular ones with the two children. Yeah. Adwaita right. and Nikhil. Yeah. And so that ad has gone on to like do very well and it's dubbed in many languages and it's, it's all over the place and it's It was very much appreciated both of them both the films so what's happening next uh, what projects i know um, suitable boy happened and uh, made in heaven happened so what what other projects are you working on i mean you don't have to mention them if if you can't i uh, unfortunately i can't but I, next year is definitely going to be very very exciting i finished shooting for a, for the sequel of a very well loved web series which is going to be on netflix and um, looking forward to the launch of that we finished shooting for that one i'm also currently shooting for a period drama which is also going to be released later next year because we haven't we haven't finished it yet and i'm like i mentioned i'm going to bombay in another two weeks for a good two months <laughs> to just finish very interesting show oh i can't tell you anything no, i'm so I, sorry i know we all like which is bound okay. up in these I confidentiality know. agreements no, but i, I think know. you can expect to see quite a lot next yeah, year that's quite a lot the whole point that's that's yeah. the point that i was trying <laughs> and then i completely yes. that's why i mentioned right from the start that you know you don't have to mention because i understand uh, unfortunately can't so i'd love to give you the scoop but yeah, well, uh, i shall i, I we, have we will both up. get yeah, yeah we will both be reprimanded very hard i, I know uh, <laughs> and i don't want that 
for you no. and I don't want that for me either. So moving on from, from cinema, you are, I'm just going back to a little bit about, about you and I have read somewhere that you are a very, very obsessive animal lover and I don't know whether it's just the dogs <laughs> because I read somewhere that you have six dogs at home. Yes. Oh, wow. So, and also <laughs> that you met your husband while both of you were rescuing a dog or... That is a true story. That yeah. is a true story. <laughs> okay. That is a true story. So we never had pets uh, growing up. Like I said, daddy was in a government job and my mother just said, okay, okay, I can just look after you guys. And we grew up with my grandmother and she refused. She just put her foot down and said, look at me. So, so we didn't have pets growing up. My cha-cha used to keep dogs and I loved those dogs. Like I was very, very fond of them. But I really had no real um, pet animal connection, really. Till this dog came along and Raghav came along, you know, right behind the dog. It was There was a dog who was on our street uh, who was very badly bitten. And uh, I really, you know, I knew that there was a friend of mine who also lived there who used to feed the dog. So I kind of wrote to him. I said, listen, you know, that dog you used to feed, he's in bad shape and uh, maybe you'd like to do something about it because I can't see him. Like if I drive home every day, I'm seeing him. And like for the last three days, like he's in bad shape. So please do something. So he said, oh, I'm not here. And, you know, can you take him to the vet? And I'm like, I don't know vets. I have no idea. <laughs> So he said, all right, all right. So here's my friend Raghav. And Raghav knows everything about dogs. He will help you. And of course, I was like, who is Raghav? Why would he help you? <laughs> this is very random that I just right. randomly call somebody and say, hi, you know, can you help me with this dog? So, but anyway, that's exactly what I did. I called Raghav and I said, hi, my name is Charu. And <laughs> there's this dog. <laughs> going to die <laughs> can you please help me <laughs> let's make sure he doesn't die and i can't see him suffer so Raghav said yeah okay great i'll you know i'll come down tomorrow and maybe we can meet on that you know near the nala where the dog is usually <laughs> <laughs> spotted like that particular gutter you know that gutter and i'm like yeah i know the gutter He's like, yeah, I'll just do literally met on a rainy rainy afternoon it was extremely hot and humid and it was the month of august and it was, we met next to a gutter in, <laughs> near where I lived and, and couldn't find the dog. He had disappeared. So we looked in every nala and every gutter of the entire colony that whole afternoon together. <laughs> and that, that kind of bound you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> It's so, it's such a funny story. You know, I have no idea at our wedding how many, how many jokes and songs there were <laughs> about how we met. <laughs> but oh eventually, God. eventually we did, uh, you know, find the dog and, and we did end up taking him. And he, he, he was treated and he was well and he lived for many years after that. <laughs> oh, wow. So he survived and uh, he, so he lived with you, is it? You took him, basically brought him home. No, you don't do that, you know, with dogs, actually, uh, oh. especially the street dogs, they're quite territorial. And uh, because we already had dogs at home, that wouldn't oh. have worked out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we just made sure that he had a good life for as long as he lived. But we did end up adopting dogs from Friendicos. Mm -hmm. Friendicos is a wonderful, wonderful uh, animal welfare organization based in Delhi. And we went there and we brought home abandoned dogs. And then we looked after them. So that's how we landed up with six dogs. Six and dogs. <laughs> yeah, and Raghav, Raghav has a farm, which my father-in-law built. So we were living there for the first the 10 years of our marriage. And so that's where we had the dogs. Okay, nice. Wow. And I can hear someone in the background. I'm not sure. That's, that's, that's my son. Oh. That's my son. <laughs> Do you want to say hi? Hi. Hello, hi, and what's your name? Augustia. Augustia, and how old are you, Augustia? Five and a half. Wow, and you love dogs as well? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that must be incredible. Thank you for oh, talking to me, Augustia. Thank you, Augustia. I had told him very specifically you're not to come into come this into room, but of course, <laughs> you, you know, he yeah. has to. How does he feel when you kind of go away for long periods of time? 
he's such a good baby you know touch wood pal i got so lucky with him he's he's known forever that i was an actor i i conceived agastya i think pretty much after i came back from siyasat i was feeling so fulfilled as an actor hmm. that uh, i told raghav i said you know i'm so happy like this is like amazing i had the best time and i really had a great time living on my own in bombay and da 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 i think let's have a baby and he's like are you sure you know you're an actor and you know your life is going to change and i was like no it's okay i'm like really feeling fulfilled right now i think we can have a, a baby and 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 uh, and then he came along and he is just amazing i mean he is very aware of the fact that his mother is an actor and you know just goes off for shoots he has no idea what they are he himself is not interested at all in uh, acting <laughs> or uh, yet. anything to not do with yet. not yet not yet <laughs> maybe so, maybe yeah. but he's you know he's but he's seen a lot of stuff happen at home i mean there are a lot of shoots that happen at home there are you know i have a lot of theater rehearsals happening at home and he's just not he's always around so he knows the basic rules you know when you know when somebody's you know trying to get a scene right or when mummy's working with actors i have to sit quietly and he mostly does that but but he's 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 good about it and he all he i always tell him that you know i'm going to go away and and i don't lie to him and i tell him i'm going to go away on this date and i'm going to come back on this date so then he's he's okay yeah that's good because i keep my promise yeah yeah <laughs> right and you bring back presents as well so <laughs> <laughs> can't help that <laughs> can't help that yeah absolutely thank you so much charu i've so i mean i could go on talking to you but i guess <laughs> which too. i will after i i finish the recording but i guess there has to be a time limit to these things so sure. i really really enjoyed listening to you i love your spunk and you know and it's just so it's so refreshing and and i'm i'm sure you're going to do great work and i look forward to seeing a lot more of you on screen and hopefully off screen as well but <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways thank you so much and before i leave you anything that you would like to you know in a few words say to my listeners who incidentally are from all over the world who may be oh. aspiring actors or who may be confused like you were at, at the age of whatever between 10 and lsr any any uh, little bits of advice that from your experience that you could could give them oh gosh you don't have i to, guess but, <laughs> but nice. no i'm just i'm just trying to pick like you know what to say i think keep yourself open you know to whatever comes your way i think that would be because a lot of times and i've seen this with young actors they you know they get very disheartened very quickly if things don't happen the way they imagine things to happen or they think you only uske sath aise hua to mere sath aise nahi hua so don't don't get disheartened know that life has its own plans i never started out thinking that i'm going to be an actor never I never even started out thinking I'm going to be a dancer. I mean I I wanted to do physics, you know. And and really wanted it with my heart. So so don't don't give up on that because life will find a way. You know, today I'm doing a project where I'm very much associated with, you know, teaching physics. I wanted to make films and today I, you know, have had a ch- had an opportunity to end TV to sort of not just be the anchor but also be part of the writing process and the editing process and I know all those things because you know they gave me the the liberty to do that and they saw that i had an interest in that so whatever comes to you say yes you know say yes to life yeah follow life a little little bit more yeah brilliant brilliant i don't know if that makes sense no it makes a lot of sense yeah i think a lot of people okay. tend to hesitate tend to not you know not take the risk because they don't know what to expect but i think if you don't take the risk then you'll never know and never and and there should be no regrets so no i think you you make absolute sense thank you so much once again charu thank you pyle lovely talking to you likewise <laughs>